Dear black people, you need to get out of debt. Debt is usually the number one cause why black people never achieve financial freedom. I'll be honest with you, I really, really hate debt. And I hope after this presentation you do as well. There are several reasons why I despise debt so much. Debt prevents you from saving because you're too busy paying for things you couldn't afford in the first place. Debt prevents you from investing because you just had to have that new car, didn't you? Debt prevents you from retiring comfortably because you can't increase your 401k allocation due to being broke. Debt prevents you from being charitable because if you can't give to yourself, how can you give to others? Debt causes financial strain on marriages and relationships. It's the anchor that weighs you down towards financial oblivion. For those that are religious, there is no major religion that says debt is good. Not Christianity, not Judaism, not Islam. And finally, in my opinion, debt is economic slavery. Debt is the financial chain around your neck that doesn't allow you to leave the financial hell that you're in. And the whip of compounding debt interest beats you month after month to do its bidding. Debt is so common in our society that sometimes we forget what they are. Credit cards, student loans, car payments, both financing a car and leasing a car, medical bills, mortgages, payday loans, all of these are debt. Each of them robs you of the financial prosperity and you must get rid of them. Now I know what you're thinking. Debt is part of being an adult. That's not true in one of the many excuses I've heard over the years. Some people think that they need debt to build their credit score. That's false, and I'll address this in subsequent presentation. Others think that some debt is good, like mortgages, because you can use the interest as a tax deduction. That's also wrong for three reasons. One, there's no such thing as good debt for black people given our economic inequalities. Two, no mortgage payments means you can invest or save the extra cash on hand. And three, no matter how large the tax deduction is at the end of the year, you will always end up with less cash on hand because the deduction doesn't cover all the mortgage payments you made throughout the year. My favorite excuse is when someone says I have extra money to pay off my debt, but I don't want to because I'm afraid I'll be broke. Unfortunately for these people, the money clouds their judgment because they don't realize that being in debt is already broke. What I wanna offer in this presentation are some methods to get out of debt. Two of the most common are the avalanche method and the debt snowball method. Both are very similar with a simple tweak. In the avalanche method, you line up all your debt from highest interest rate debt to the lowest interest rate debt, regardless of the amount. You put as much extra money that you can on the highest interest rate debt while paying the minimum balance on the others. Once the first debt is paid off, you move on to the second highest interest rate debt using the extra payment from the first and the minimum payment from the second. Once the second interest rate debt is paid off, you move on to the third interest rate debt, using the extra payment from the first, the minimum payment from the second, and now the minimum payment from the third. You repeat this process, building the payment avalanche until all your debts are paid off. The debt snowball is very similar, except that you line your debt up from the lowest amount to the highest amount, regardless of the interest rate. From there, the process is the same. You put all the money you can on the smallest debt while paying the minimum balance on the others. When the first debt is paid off, you move on to the second, using the extra payment from the first and now the minimum payment from the second. Subsequently, you continue using this method as you create a debt snowball. The pros and cons for each is pretty straightforward. For the avalanche method, the biggest advantage is that you pay less interest over time and that you get out of debt faster. The major con for this approach is that it will generally take longer to see progress because some of the larger debts may have low interest rates. So think about your mortgage. For the debt snowball, the major pro is that you will quickly see progress that you work on since you're trying to clear your smaller debts. And this is great for motivation. The major con, however, is that you'll likely end up paying more over time compared to the avalanche method because the highest interest rate debt could be possibly paid until much later. A quick note on the debt snowball. Dave Ramsey incorporated the debt snowball into a seven step plan for financial freedom. For those of you who are interested in looking into this more, there's a great book that he wrote called The Total Money Makeover. I purchased this book after I was debt free, but there are some still great gems in there on how to achieve financial independence.
I want to talk briefly about debt consolidation since many people have reached out to me about this. Debt consolidation is the process of refinancing your total debt in such a way that it reduces your total amount every month. However, this is not the full story. Debt consolidation extends the term of your debt. This is why it's lower. And it's usually secured by a second loan or second mortgage, which is never good for black people. In addition to that, you're not guaranteed a lower interest rate on the new amount and the interest rates can usually fluctuate over time. So in short, you actually pay more over the long run and usually don't change your behavior towards debt, which is honestly the most important thing. So whether you use the avalanche method or the debt snowball method, you will need discipline to follow through to the end. One item that I recommend to people is being on a cash basis. Being on a cash basis means paying for everything in cash and not taking on additional debt. The premise of this method is that if you can't pay for cash for something, you don't buy it. Also, behavioral economics teaches us that people are more likely to overspend using a credit card than using cash. In fact, McDonald's did a study where they reported that their patrons spent 47% more using credit cards than cash. The reason is because paying cash forces you to see your money leave your hand, which is much more painful. Using a credit card is relatively painless since you don't see your money leaving your pocket. My advice is to pay yourself a cash allowance each week and incorporate this as part of your budget. For example, you pay yourself $100 a week to spend it on whatever you see fit. However, once that cash is used up, that's it. No borrowing, no swiping of credit cards, no debt. Remember, the point is to get out of debt, not to add to it. So I'll leave you with some characteristics of debt-free people from Dave Ramsey. I won't read through all these characteristics since you could just pause the video and read them for yourself. But in short, you must have discipline. You must think differently about debt. You must change your spending habits. You must sacrifice. And you must always remember that a part of all that you earn is yours to keep.